It is Wednesday night as I'm recording this, my dudes, which means it's time for a second First Thoughts and Initial Impressions video for Epic 7. This one will be on the heavily anticipated Ara Ara Onesan Harseti. Yes, that did really pay me to say that. As with all my first thoughts and initial impressions, I will go over the character's kit. Do I think they're good? Where I'd play them? What kinds of gear and artifacts on them? All that stuff you've come to expect in a first impressions video. Now, with our introduction out of the way, let's get on and take a look at Harseti's S3 animation followed by Ilanav's voice lines because for some reason the trailer is edited wrong. What worthless little creatures. <sighs> this is a waste of my time. You outlived your usefulness. Now rest in peace. I will not give in to despair. So I must admit, the skill 3 animation for Harseti doesn't really do a lot for me. But the sprite work on this character, oh my goodness. This is some of the best sprite work that Epic 7 has ever done. And when I show you clips of this character, when we talk about our skills, take notice. It's absolutely gorgeous, the animations this character has in game. As for Harseti's English voiceover artist, it is Don Bennett, who some of you may know as Kale from Dragon Ball Super, Yukong from Honkai Star Rail, and more recently, I guess from Persona 3 Reload, which just had its DLC released this week in episode I guess. Moving on to Harseti's stats, she is a dark mage of the Libra Zodiac symbol, which means she shares a stat line with New Moon Luna. Taking a look at her stat line, she has 1039 attack, 613 defense, 6034 health, 124 base speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. Imprint concentration for the team is defense percentage, and health percentage is her self-imprint. Remember, this is an episode 5 boss character, which means all of the character's imprints are guaranteed. You just need to purchase them from the game shop using gold transmit stones. As for the stat line itself, I've talked about it a lot in a number of other videos at this point. Apparently, giant jugs, aka boobs of steel here, means you get to be not only the tankiest mage in the game, but somehow also the fastest. Yeah, this stat line makes no sense. It's absolutely broken. Before we talk about the character, first let's go over the character's kit so that, that way we're all on the same page. Starting with Harseti's skill 2 passive, the law of Skuggiheim, or Skuggiheim, but we're just going to call it Skuggy. The law of Skuggy, which this may go down as perhaps the most divisive skill in Epic 7 history. At the start of battle, the speed of Harseti is fixed going forward. And speed of all heroes, except for Harseti, is limited to a maximum of 90% of Harseti's speed. On Harseti's turn, combat readiness increase effects of all heroes is not applied. The law of Skuggy only applies to PvP. Let me kind of break this down in case you are unsure of what this means. At the start of battle, Harseti has her speed fixed going forward. That means that if you have her at base speed, which is 124... She has 124 speed no matter what. Whether she is slowed or sped up, she is stuck at 124 speed. And the speed of all heroes except for Harseti is limited to a maximum of 90% of her speed. So if she is base speed 124, then that means that the rest of the cast can only have a maximum speed of 111.6 or rounded up. 112 speed so every other character in the game is 112 speed if they are at 112 speed or faster on harseti's turn combat readiness increase effects of all heroes do not apply that means that if she soul burns eternal wanderer ludwig does not get a combat readiness push at the end of her turn characters like sage ball and saison and infinite horizon Achates do not get a combat readiness push okay got it on to the next skill Harseti's skill 3 is Checkmate. You acquire 2 focus upon use as well as acquire 3 souls. It is a 4-5 to five turn cooldown depending on Malagora. It is an AoE attack that decreases buff durations by 2 turns and has a 75% chance each to inflict unable to counterattack as well as unable to be buffed for 2 turns. Checkmate penetrates 100% of the target's defense. When Harseti's focus is full, consumes it all to increase the damage dealt. 
Damage dealt increases proportional to Harseti's maximum health. And finally, Harseti's skill 1 is Gambit. You acquire one focus upon use. Attacks the enemy with a 60% chance to decrease their defense for one turn. When it's the caster's turn, uses En Passant as an extra attack. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's max health. En Passant attacks all enemies with a 60% chance to decrease attack for one turn. Damage dealt increases proportional to Harseti's maximum health. Soul burn effect for the cost of 10 souls increases the defense break chance to 100% and extends the duration to two turns. <sighs> okay, so you got all that? Harseti's kit could make her quite possibly the most divisive hero in this game's history. That skill too, passive, the law of Skuggy, as I'm going to call it, that thing quite literally invalidates the speed stat, which has been considered the strongest stat in Epic 7's history pretty much forever, right? Literally since 2018 when this game came out, speed has been the dominant stat. Speed is the foundation by which a huge portion of this game's player base lives by. There are entire playstyles based around it, namely Cleave and Agra. The Law of Skuggy literally takes everyone's speed gear and just whoosh, throws it out the window. Harseti's passive quite literally says, Hi, I'm Harseti. I have turn one. Unless you have Zeo. Period. All of those 25 plus speed pieces that you farmed for the past couple years, they don't matter here. The speed imprints that you drafted, they don't matter here. The combat readiness push that you took to try to cleave my team, that does not matter here. For some people, I think this passive is going to be a bridge too far. And if that's you watching this video, then you are well within your rights to feel that way. You don't have to enjoy or like everything in Epic 7. I don't want to come off as someone who isn't sympathetic to the plight of players who have spent the better part of a decade chasing speed as a stat, dumping thousands of dollars in the game sometimes in pursuit of it. I am well aware that I am a notable turn two player in this game's community. I clearly have a bias towards the slower playstyle because honestly, I find it more enjoyable. And also because I'm not naturally blessed with fast speed gear despite trying to constantly roll for it. I just can't compete with some of the speed demons on the ladder. Earlier today, I watched a video by Kana. And in it, he talked about the leak kit for Harseti that obviously turned out to be fake. It's not the one we're talking about in this video. That kit had a skill in it that said that she would remove injury, right? And Kana talked about how it didn't really feel good for him to heavily invest into injury units only to have a character have some kind of mechanic or skill that counters it. I understood what he was saying, and I was sympathetic to how he was feeling at the time. It really sucks to invest heavily in something in Epic 7 only to have it invalidated. Then I started to think about it a little bit more over the coming hours and realized that injury has literally, as a set, as a mechanic, invalidated most of my strongest units over the last 10 plus months. I started thinking about how I have friends who have legitimately some of the best HP scaling bruisers in the world, and they've spent tens of thousands of dollars in pursuit of those bruisers and how that all went up in smoke because of characters like Death Dealer Ray and Urban Shadow Shoe. And then I started to think about my days as a competitive gamer, as a competitive player. I mentioned before on the channel how my favorite t-shirt that I own is one made by a company called Broken Tier. The shirt is emblazoned with the words nerf, buff, patch, adapt. And all of those words are crossed out besides adapt, which is emphasized with a heavy underline. Adaptation is the backbone of my personal competitive philosophy that I've outlined in my Five Rings video. 
Adaptation is why I had success and accolades at the highest levels of competitive play in other games. Adaptation is why I won the only Epic 7 tournament that I've ever entered. Adaptation is the reason why I was a faithless Lydica Cleaver in one of my first ever Emperor finishes. Most people don't know that. Adaptation is why a few seasons ago, I played Midnight Galilius literally every game, and I rushed that shit down. I started Epic 7 as a cleaver. Every time my playstyle has been invalidated, I've changed how I play the game. If you want to win at the highest level of play, you play what wins, not always necessarily what you like to play. This is the first time in six years I can honestly say that speed rolls have been invalidated in Epic 7. And honestly, kudos to Smilegate. I don't know if it's a smart choice, but it's certainly a bold one. And I do think it will force change in this game. And if you don't like the character, you can simply pre-ban it. Or simply just choose not to play with it or against it. And that's an okay feeling to have. There have absolutely been formats that I've hated. This contention season, I didn't enjoy playing it. So I just didn't. And that was fine. I found other ways to enjoy Epic 7 during that time. There's no guarantee, by the way, that I'm not going to hate the format that Harseti is about to bring upon us all. For all I know, she might make the game a toxic wasteland that even I don't want to be a part of. Maybe someone finds a way to break this character and cleave with her, right? So that that way she's not just the bane of every turn one player's existence. But considering she stops all combat readiness pushes during her turn and at the end of her turn, outside of Zeo, I have no idea how her gameplay isn't just Harseti first, followed by the next seven characters in a random turn order. This character's passive will quite literally change Epic 7. Arena defenses, they'll change. Guild War defenses, they'll change. The way players build all of their units will change because of Harseti. I mean, just think about it. If you're going to pair up another character with Harseti, why bother investing in speed? Especially if it's on like a tank or a DPS. It's just going to get locked to 112 anyway. At that point, might as well just invest in more bulk, more damage, more effectiveness, more ER. And that's all just the passive skill. We didn't even talk about the skill 1 or the skill 3 yet. Her skill 3, by the way, since it makes it so characters can't counter, I don't even think that the meta will just become a bunch of counter bruisers with Elbrus Ritual Sword. She ironically shuts all of those off too, so she somehow still counters turn 2. As for how to build the character, destruction set or simply any of the three set two piece builds. So for example, like six health or like two health, uh, you know, four defense or maybe two crit, two defense, two health. Anything that just gives her the most amount of stats and keep her as slow as possible. That seems to be, at least on paper, the best way to go. Just get stats, especially ones that aren't speed because... Why would you, right? I think damage-based builds are the first thing that I would want to test because it just makes sense, right? If you're guaranteed to have turn one, if she picks off a key target, well, that's GG. You just win the game. That said, I could absolutely see somebody trying to play her like really tanky with high effectiveness on like a Bissell Crown or something because, I mean, that's pretty monstrous, right? You have turn one, might as well just introduce chaos and if you happen to get the stun... Uh, that's just GG. Probably not as consistent as the damage build, but hey. Uh, Ancient Book and Last Tea Time also seem like pretty good options, especially if you're going to go for full damage, right? Just get as much damage as possible uh, for her S3, or just play Ancient Book for the guaranteed defense break, right? Especially if you have uh, the RNG in your favor and your character is going second on the CR bar. That also seems to work. As for what I'd avoid, definitely not speed set, and certainly 
not revenge set, especially since, remember, her speed is fixed, right? I could understand maybe wanting to start slightly faster, but no, nah, revenge is absolutely outright. Uh, counter, probably also not super great as the character doesn't get a ton of value unless uh, it's actually her turn. It's written into Gambit, so yeah, probably wouldn't go counter either. To put a cap on the entire review for this video, quite literally this character is uncharted territory. The character is obviously strong, and whether you decide to pull for her or not, like Bellion, this character's influence will be felt throughout the entire game for a very long time. Quite honestly, I'm not sure if this character is broken, but at the same time, I don't know how the hell you design something to beat this. <sighs> People have been asking for big changes to PvP, the state of PvP for a while. Well, this character is it. She's probably the biggest curveball that I've ever seen since I've started doing these first thoughts and initial impressions videos. All I can really do is the same thing that I've always done. Adapt. And if I don't enjoy it, then I'm just going to choose not to engage with Harseti. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.